Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll go through the VLOOKUP function and uh, have another demo using the same example, the fine floor costs. But my thinking is that this in this demo, I will go through it a bit slower and actually explain the VLOOKUP function properly. So first of all, I'm going to explain these tables here. As you see, I have two tables, one with the cost of different materials and the other one with the rooms and in there I have the material covered and as you see these are matching up so the TG is actually a wooden tiles and the CT is the ceramic tiles so on. So what I want to do now is I want to get the cost of this material from that table and that, in that case I'm going to use the VLOOKUP function to do that. It's very important though that this table is sorted alphabetically. The VLOOKUP function does a vertical lookup, so that means that it's searching from the top and going down. So that means that it needs to find the appropriate value in this list when it's searching uh, vertically. So it's very important that these are sorted in the correct order. So when you're using a new formula, I would recommend using this function guide here. Um, when you do that, then you can find all the functions here and you can just browse through them and find the one that you want. But you can also browse through uh, a specific category. And in this case, it's a lookup function that I want to use. And as you see, there are a bunch of functions. The one we're going to uh, use now is the vertical lookup. As you see, there's a lookup one. You shouldn't use that one. It's provided for backward compatibility. There is also a vertical lookup one and there is a, a horizontal lookup over there. So the one we want to use is the vertical lookup. As, you, as I said, this is looking vertically from the top and down. And as you see, it takes a couple of parameters. I'll go through those shortly. I'll just click OK there and then I'll go through these different parameters. As you see, there are three mandatory parameters. Those are the ones in bold. And then there is the range lookup, which is not bold, so it's uh, not mandatory. So you can select to do that one or not. Now I'm going to use the wizard to fill out these things. I'm going to start with a lookup value. And notice when I click around these, I get a little example or a little explaining text for each of the values here. So the lookup value is the value that you want to search for in the, the other table. And that's, of course, this cell. Notice that I'm clicking behind the dialog there. That's one of the features of the function guide here. Very useful. Instead of typing in the address, I can just uh, click it here. The table array is this array. Now, that's, of course, a relative reference. So you want to make sure that you press F4 on this to make sure that it's an absolute reference so that I can fill out the same ones in, all the way down there. You could, of course, also name this range. That works just as well. And then the column index, you need to make sure which column you want the return value to be from in this table. And that's a one-based counter. So this is the first column, second column, third column. And of course, we want the price, which is in the third column. So I'm just going to input the number three there. And as you see, I already get the answer there, which is 220. So TJ, 220, right? And then I'm going to specify whether I want an exact value or not. And in this case, I do want an exact value. I don't want it to guess. If I input something that's not in this list, I want it to give an error, not to guess at the closest one. So I want that one to be false. As you see, you can skip that one, but the default value is actually true. So you might get unexpected results if you don't supply that false value there. Usually that's the one you want. You want the false one, in my opinion at least. So now I'm clicking OK there, and as you see now I can fill this all the way down. Now if I input CX there as a material, and of course that doesn't exist, then I get not available, and that's the way it should be. If I change that to true instead, so it does guess, then I get the closest match, which is the 125, which is the closest match to that value. And that one can be very useful if you have a range of values and you want the, the preceding uh, limit. So if you have a, a list of um, rebate limits, then you want the lower one. So that one might be useful then to have the true parameter there. 
So depending on how you're going to use this VLOOKUP. That concludes this demo. Thank you for watching.